Hey guys, Stephen Colts of Mac here. Now, iPhones have replaced almost every single video camera on the market, but you can always tell when something's been shot on an iPhone. Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you five tips to shoot professional looking video straight from your phone. So, let's get started. My first tip is to not use the stock camera app on the iPhone. While it's great that you can access it from the lock screen, it doesn't have all the options that help us shoot professional looking video, such as manual focus or exposure. Plus, you're limited to Apple's 14 megabits per second bit rate. You can actually record higher quality video using third party apps such as Filmic Pro. It may seem a little bit pricey at just under $15, but it's definitely worth every penny. Or, well, cent. Firstly, it allows us to shoot at a higher bit rate, meaning the shots have a higher image quality. Secondly, it's full of essential tools for having complete control when shooting video. The sort you'd imagine to see in a DSLR or even a dedicated video camera. For example, you can carefully set your exposure, white balance, and focus. Setting your exposure and white balance are essential for shooting professional looking video. Nothing looks worse than a video cycling through auto exposure and changing from hues of orange to blue. Lock these settings in place before you start filming and your footage will look 10 times better. Frame rates are also adjustable here, from the cinematic 24 frames per second to the more common 30 frames per second. Just keep in mind that shooting at a higher bit rate can drain your battery a fair bit quicker and it will also increase file sizes. You're also able to smoothly pull focus within the app, so you can change your focus from an object or person in the foreground to the background. One thing that really stands out for me between professional looking videos and videos shot on a phone is shaky footage. Unless you're watching the Blair Witch Project, cameras are more often than not stable, using tripods or steadicam rigs. While we may not all have the funds to splash out on these top of the range accessories, there are some low cost options. If you don't want to spend a single dollar, you can lean on an object or even a person to keep a fair amount of shake at bay. The only problem is this will limit your movement. Then you can also get low cost tripod mounts for your iPhone, so you can use a tripod when filming. The one I have here is the Glyph from Studio Neat, which costs just $28. There are cheaper options out there, but I personally love the small, simple construction of this one, and my iPhone feels nice and secure. They've even got an updated version, which I'll leave a link to in the description down below. One of the newest and most popular options for the moment are gimbals. The most well known of these is the DJI Osmo, and you'd be forgiven for thinking this one was it. In fact, this is the Smooth Q gimbal from Zion Tech. It costs $180 less than the Osmo, but is still packed with the features. Despite its $130 price tag, it's really well built and works perfectly. A gimbal reduces vibrations and shakes from movements through three motors to keep the camera level. It gives the illusion that a camera is floating through air. All of this allows for smooth movements for when filming handheld and especially for tracking shots, where you're following a subject or moving around something. It all adds to the cinematic feel. I'll leave a link to the Q gimbal as well, but let me know in the comments section if you'd like to see a full review. My next tip is about zoom. Never zoom while filming. You'll rarely see it happen in feature films or professionally produced video because it pulls viewers straight out of what they're watching as they're reminded that a camera is involved, instead of just enjoying the visuals. Also, unless you're using the iPhone 7 Plus and switching between the two lenses, you're going to be losing quality. A digital zoom quickly kills the quality of video and when we're going through all of this effort, we don't want to be ruining it with grainy stretched footage. If you need to be closer to something, physically get closer. If you want to slowly get closer to an object, use something like the Q gimbal or an Osmo and track in. The difference will be night and day. Speaking of which, due to the iPhone's small sensor, filming in low light is always going to result in grainy footage. While the iPhone's camera has come on leaps and bounds in terms of performance in low light, the more light you've got to work with, the better. It's more of something to keep in mind rather than something you can always control. As well as light, sound can be a huge issue. If you're recording sound for say a YouTube video, using an external mic or even the AirPods internal microphone will be an improvement. For example, this is the audio from the internal microphone on the iPhone 7. And now I've switched over to the Rode Smart Lab, which is plugged into another iPhone. Hopefully you can tell the difference. For my final tip, and it doesn't require any additional kit, but will make a difference and that's framing. Rather than just randomly pointing and shooting, a little bit of thought as to how you frame a shot can go a long way. Both the iPhone camera app and Filmic Pro have grid overlays. They're there to help you balance a shot naturally. There are points in an image where content just snaps into place. It makes an image more visually pleasing. If you want to learn more, search on Google for the golden spiral. But basically, all you need to know is to put the grids up and either align your subject to one of the intersecting lines or stick your horizon on one of the horizontal lines. There's no set rule as it's all a matter of taste. The grids just give you something to measure your taste against. 
Also, experiment with frame rates and movements. Once you've shot all of your video, it's time to edit it all together. Here's a quick montage of the footage I've shot on my iPhone 7. Well, that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments section down below if you've got any tips for shooting video on your iPhone. Also, if you enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up and make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss a single video from the Pulse of the Map. I'll catch you in the next one.